So, this is the Sony Magic Link. This is a really interesting device, and I've actually done a video kind of introducing everybody to what this device was. Uh, it's in my channel, you can see it in the sidebar, and I might even put a link to it down below in the description for this video. But in any case, this is the Sony Magic Link. I'm opening up its case right now, and I'm going to take it out of this soft protective cover that it came with, which is connected with snaps. So you can see the actual device itself. Now this was a very early attempt at an internet-connected communications device. It has a built-in dial-up modem on the side over here. It has a big touch screen. It came with a uh, kind of an interesting um, uh, stylus built into it. If I could find that, it's over here. A little pop-out button. If I can pull the stylus out. This was a device that had a real um, personal meaning for me because it was on display in an electronic shop in San Francisco when I was a kid back in the 90s. And I was just desperate to get my hands on any technology that I could. And this thing had been on display, I think maybe in a circuit city or possibly at a good guy's, but in any case, it was just a fascinating gadget. It had a really interesting interface that was built around the, the visual metaphor of a house in a town. And so when you're interfacing with this device, when you're working, you're literally navigating the different rooms within the house, uh, sort of an office metaphor, and then you can leave the house, which is really how you're interacting with connected services. And this device was built by Sony, but it's running software from a company called General Magic. And the General Magic was kind of an amazing incubator for technology. In fact, so many people started at or worked at General Magic and then later went on to become tremendously influential across the technology industry. Uh, people who went on to work at Apple and Google and a ton of companies, uh, many of whom are now, you know, in 2019 and onward still having a tremendous impact on the world that we live in. This device wasn't a big hit when it came out, but the concepts that were developed by that team at General Magic were incredibly influential. In fact, the whole concept of cloud computing, in some ways you could draw direct lines from today in 2019 back to the original work being done to develop this platform. So even though this thing wasn't a commercial success in the consumer marketplace, you can't call it a failure in the sense that it really had a tremendous, although underreported, impact on the future that we live in now. And I'm also really excited because there's a new documentary coming out about the team that built this device. So lots of interesting stuff around General Magic happening today, which is sort of surprising given that they were not well remembered by a lot of folks. What I'm here to talk about today is actually something that I got from a, a pal of mine on Twitter, Hi Mitchell, and uh, this is a person who knows that I have a real soft spot for portable handheld computing devices and this one in particular and Mitchell gave me a heads up not long ago that they had a, uh, an accessory for this device that mm, if it isn't one of a kind in the world there certainly can't be many of them left and for me this is really hitting that personal nostalgia soft spot because as I mentioned earlier this was a gadget that I used in a retail setting. I played with one of these things many times as a kid in San Francisco on our retail display floor. And the one that I would have been playing with was literally part of a big uh, display kiosk in that electronics store. And the accessory that Mitchell was able to pass along to me is something really interesting. It's the Sony Magic Link demo card. And I'll put some uh, close-up footage of this in the uh, video here, but this is a uh, PC card, so it's got a big row of little pins on one end of it, and it's clearly designed to slide into the PC card slot on the side of the Sony Magic Link computer. And so for me, it's really kind of interesting because it's always interesting when you can get your hands on uh, software that was not intended for sale to the public. It's often referred to as NFR software, not for resale. And while this card doesn't have any NFR wording on it, it's clearly uh, indicated that it was probably um, intended for use in a retail setting just by virtue of the fact that it says demo card on it. So it's actually really likely, if not 100% uh, certain, that this would have contained the same demo data and applications that I was playing with as a kid in the city 25 years ago.
So, I don't know how many of these things even le uh, still exist. There's no other information on the card, so I don't believe this was something that was actually sold as a a retail product and as best I can tell it's not something that was included as a pack-in with these devices because this format of memory card would have been really expensive back then so it's unlikely that it was something that Sony was giving away so again it's pretty likely that this was something intended only for use in a retail demo kiosk type situation so I don't know how many of these still exist on the planet and are known to be in working order I don't know if this one is it's certainly possible that at some point between the early to mid-1990s and right now, this thing could have been erased and reused if it had some sort of erasable, rewritable memory inside or flash memory. It's also possible that it had some sort of battery backup uh, component to it, which probably would have failed decades ago. So I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to put some fresh batteries in my Magic Link, and we're going to put this thing in, and we're going to see what happens. I'm really interested. I'm, I'm really excited. I know it's sort of a nerdy thing to geek out on, but for me personally, because of the uh, early experiences I had with this device, very possibly running this software, it feels really exciting to see what happens. So I hope you stick around. It should be pretty interesting. All right, so here we are. We've got the Sony Magic Link. I've got fresh batteries in here. And uh, we've got the Magic Link demo card, which again has no other markings on it at all, which is kind of unusual. And again, I, I honestly think that's a, a good indication that this was not a retail product or even an accessory that would have ever been included with one of these um, Magic Links when it was new. And I'm going to go ahead and just pop this card in and try to power on the device and let's see what happens. So I'm now sliding it in the side. Now I have to be honest, the display on the Magic Link is painfully shiny and it's not a backlit display. This is a pretty early example of a, of a um, touch sensitive or pressure sensitive portable computing device. So it has the stylus, which I just pulled out from the side and uh, any which way I move this thing, it starts to pick up reflections from the ceiling and my camera and everything else. So I'm going to do my best to try to keep it angled at just the right angle that you can see what's happening on screen, but not be uh, blinded by whatever is being reflected. So I am now sliding the Magic Link demo card into the Magic Link. Uh, there is a release slash lock switch on the side, so I'm releasing that. That allows me to push the card flush all the way inside. So hopefully you can see that. And now I can slide that lock switch again. There's also a contrast knob over here next to the power slider. So there's a pretty good chance I'll be fiddling with that. But uh, here we go. That's me. Hi. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn this thing on with the demo card inside. I've never done this before. I don't know what's going to happen. I hope it boots into some sort of retail mode um, demo experience with sample data and contacts and that sort of thing. Maybe even a, a, some sort of simulated internet connection, but this is all just speculation. I really don't know. It's been so long since I played with one of these things in a retail setting. I mean, we're going back to the early to mid 1990s. It's been a, little, been a long time. So let's go ahead. I'm going to power it on. I'm hitting the slider switch on the side. It says Sony Magic Link. I'm now going to fiddle with the contrast slider. Hopefully we can get that to appear a little bit more visibly. And now it says, now personalizing your Magic Link for Jack Rabbit. This will take a minute or two. Interesting. No idea what Jack Rabbit is. I'm definitely going to have to do some work in editing to see if I can boost the contrast on the display a little bit so it's more visible, but uh, we'll see what happens. Well, they definitely were not kidding about it taking a minute or two. It is uh, taking quite a bit of time, but I'm not in a rush. And hey, here we go. Now we've got something on screen, and it says, Hi, I need your help to make sure that the touch-sensitive screen on this Magic Link communicator is properly aligned. 
To align the screen, simply touch the screen anywhere with the supplied stylus or your finger. And there's a very cute animated rabbit, which is sort of the uh, logo for the Magic Link operating system. There's even the icon silk screen on the device right there. So I'm going to go ahead and touch the screen. Touch the target to center. Oh, touch the target's center to align the touch sensitive screen. So I'll do that up here. And here. There we are. Hi, I need your help. Okay, hi, my name is Jack, and I'm here inside this Sony Magic Link communicator. I'd like to show you around the neighborhood a nice community based on Magic Cap software. So I have a pretty good feeling about this. This is great. This is indicating to me that the demo card that we just inserted really is a retail demo experience. Um, it says, are you ready to continue? I'm going to say yes. You can exchange messages with all of your friends, family, and business associates. And mess with the contrast a little bit. And business associates with, with the Magic Link Communicator. You can also organize addresses, appointments, notes, files, and electronic mail, and keep all the information at your fingertips. Let's explore the Magic Link Communicator together. This is it. This is a fully interactive retail demo experience. This is not the built-in tutorial that popped up the first time I ran this device after I received it. So yes, I'm ready to continue. If you want to explore on your own during the tour, go ahead. I'll wait for you in the corner. Just tap on me when you're done exploring and I'll continue from where we left off. This is really neat. To move around inside the Magic Link Communicator, all you need is the supplied stylus or your finger. Simply touch the picture of the object you want to use. But stick with me for now, there's a lot to see. Thanks, Jack Rabbit. Your desk has several familiar objects. Oh, it's quietly playing some music. I don't know if the audio is picking that up. Very cool. So there you have it, everybody. This is a <laughs> maybe the only remaining uh, retail demo software suite for the Sony Magic Link device powered by General Magic's Magic Cap operating system. Am I ready to continue? I'm going to say pause. Let's see what happens if I pause it. And now I'm kind of curious if we look in the inbox, what do we have? Yeah. Look at this. We've got um, emails. We've got one from Bob, who's offering to play some handball on Sunday. And do I want to reply yes or no? I'm going to say no. Don't want to play handball. Bob, leave me alone. <laughs> Great. No, go away. Oh, and it put a discarded thumbs down on that message. Neat. And I can even say discard. Do I want to throw away the message? No, I want to keep it for posterity. And I can go back to my inbox. Let's see the um, email from boss. <laughs> and the email from my boss includes an animation. It's got an animation of a rock rolling down a hill about to kill somebody. It's kind of dire. And this is dated 8-28-1994. Uh, Wow, 25 years ago. Enclosed are the projections for the upcoming meeting. Please review and send back the modified chart. And there's an attachment where it says projections. And if I click on that, I don't know if anything will happen. Can't do anything with that animation. Do I want to change this message? No. So it's indicating there's an attachment, but I can't really get to it. That's okay. Wow, this is really cool. Uh, if we clear this. Oh, I don't want to throw away these messages. So I can go back to my desk. Let's see what's in the Rolodex. 
Hey, there's General Magic's contact info. North Mary Avenue in Sunnyvale, California. I've been there. I've got family that lives not far from there. That's really cool. Intuit Incorporated. They're still around. They're the TurboTax people. I wonder if Sony is in here, given that they've made this device. Yup. There's Sony Electronics. Really cool. So... I'm not going to go all the way through every element of this right now. Uh, I don't know if the camera setup is working very well. I am just super, super excited that this works at all. 25-year-old retail demo software, and it's working beautifully. So thank you for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed seeing this, and uh, I may post a follow-up video if I find more interesting content in this demo material. So that's it. Thank you. Bye.